With the new Looker Studio extension for Google Sheets, you can take a sheet like this and with a couple of clicks, turn it into a dashboard like this in Looker Studio. That's dynamic and much easier to navigate than a big clunky spreadsheet with way too many rows. Within Google Sheets to do this, you need to go up into extensions in the top toolbar, press extensions, go down into Looker Studio and create a report. This will open some options on the right hand side for Looker Studio report creation. Normally you want to go with that source sheet for the data. Use first row as headers include hidden and filtered cells. And if you want, you can include a selected range. So when I press create, this will then take that data, stick it in the back of a Looker Studio dashboard and give me a default dashboard to get started. And that's under the same credentials as my Google Sheet. And you can see that the data has been pulled in is all in its proper data types from Google sheets so nothing really to do on the data end there's two graphs and here is placeholders i'm just going to delete those and i'm just going to rename this as sales report the filters are there but i want to have another filter so i just copy and paste one of these filters and i put it in behind i want to change what's in both of these filters so instead of customer name which is too granular i'm going to go with state because this is a sales dashboard in the US and I want to go with segment in there. And now within a few seconds, I've got three good filters I can use for any end user to filter down that dashboard. I'm actually gonna put a date range in here and you can do these with dynamic date ranges. This is this year to date, so it's taken January to December. Gonna add a few charts to this, just charts that I would add to nearly any dashboard. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a scorecard, gonna pull that out and I'm gonna style it. So just a few normal things I do in a scorecard card is that I send everything to the center. I'm just going to pad down the top to bring that um, KPI into the center and I'm going to increase the font size. I want to get a border around this as well just to outline it and I'm going to change the corner rounding in there to about 25. And then what I can do again is I can change that into sales. And then I want to go down and I want to make compact numbers. And because I've got all the styling in place, I'm just going to copy and paste this twice and put in different metrics into each of those. And now I've got a sales discount and profit. So the next thing I want to do is put in a geo chart because this is data from the US in each state. And you can see that the current geo is on country. I want to just change that into state. This quite is not in the right geo dimension, but how I can change that is just go down into geo here go to country subdivision first level which is state and now I have exactly what I want in terms of sales per each state. I just want to blend that in with the rest of the dashboard so I'm just going to change the color here to a dark gray and with this geo map I can filter on a state and that will filter the rest of the dashboard and this will look a lot better when I have more graphs in here. I'm going to add a pivot table in here and this is a pivot table with a heat map which I like a lot for seeing kind of two dimensions at the same time and what I can do here here is kind of what I've been doing with other elements. I'm going to change this to sales and then that state's a bit too granular for this. So I'm going to put in subcategory and segment. And now I can see all the subcategories and segments. Just going to go into style and very simply just change that heat map so it blends in with the rest of the dashboard. This is also filterable from both the subcategory and the segment side. So very useful to get a quick view of data. Last thing I want to do is put in a time series because this is on a time series series basis and um, that's what the time series looks like out of the box I make a few changes so I always do this with these graphs is I make the grid transparent which I think looks a lot better I'm going to go down and change the legend to the right hand side and turn that into the middle and then I'm going to go up and change this line charts into bars and then change the color to my gray again and then this dates are a bit too granular again for me so I'm going to go into the date and instead of having that as a date you can change the date and time into a year month and this looks a lot better especially if I want to look from one month to another month it's very hard with that continuous line so now I can filter this down to state and I can filter this down to other dates and it's quite a lot more useful than what I had before and as I said before every one of these charts 
filters the rest of the charts and you can dig into data a lot easier than creating kind of one pivot table. So these can be shared. So I just need to acknowledge that it's my credentials in these charts and anybody I give access to will have to get access to the underlying sheet and I'll have to give them access to the dashboard as well, which is fair enough, right? If they were going to have access to the sheet, they should be able to have access to this dashboard as well. And I'd rather just share this one with them. I'm going to change the name of this to sales report. And then now I can just share this with any users, just like I would share a Google sheet. Last thing I'm going to do is just to show you that this is dynamic. I'm just going to change this to 450,000. You can go into view and refresh the data. The data will refresh by itself after a period of time. But if you just look at the tables category there, we now have 550,000 in there. So a very nice functionality here just made possible by the fact that Google tools are so connected to each other. I hope you found that video useful. Follow for more.